I'm blowing that up. So that's our controller. This is our motor. We have kind of an unusual mounting here on the motor. Um, here's our mounting screws that we'll have to mount to some sort of an adapter plate that'll then bolt over the whole transmission and match those mounting holes. But most electric motors have a shaft, don't they? They do. We've, uh, we don't have a shaft. We don't have a shaft. <laughs> We've got a hole. This is an involuted spline um, um, sort of interior shaft. And so we have to come up with some sort of coupling between this shaft and this one, uh, or actually between this shaft and our flywheel that'll be bolted to it. And then we'll actually transmit through the clutch from the flywheel. So we'll have an adapter plate, a shaft with the flywheel and some sort of retaining system, I would think. Um, and then that'll all bolt um, here to the transmission. And we're gonna let these guys at VAC Motorsports do that. They've got a, uh, they've actually got a CNC machine shop um, and they trade in a lot of parts, but they do a lot of custom racing work and so forth, don't they? They do. They, they've got a complete race team. Uh, they make a lot of parts. Uh, they are, they're also master distributors for uh, one of the items that we're going to be uh, putting in the transmission, the Quaif differential. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Tell us about the modifications. We talked about a lighter uh, flywheel. Tell me about this Quaif uh, automatic biasing uh, torque uh, differential. What's that going to do for you? Well, the, the, the limited slip differential is going to normally in drive the, the wheel that is lacking traction is really where it tries to put the power. With a limited slip differential, where both of the wheels could, they could slip a little bit. However, we're going to have drive really much smoother, more smoothly applied to both of our front wheels under power conditions. Okay, and I think of a differential as being in the back end of the car. We clearly don't have one left here. It must be in the so transmission. The, the differential is integrated. It's internal to the transmission. So this transmission is going to be uh, disassembled and reassembled with a with a Quaif limited slip differential. Okay, and VAC Motorsports will put all that in a package for us with a lightweight aluminum flywheel and made it up with our motor. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of guys doing uh, the EV conversion take a lot of pride in being able to do these adapter plates and um, these couplers uh, themselves. Uh, I don't share the joy. Uh, it's very important that that motor and, and that adapter plate be spaced at, to very precise dimensions. Um, it's extremely important that that motor be centered on that plate um, to line up that shaft where we don't have any wobble or vibration and um, there are adequate machine shops in the world and I'm sure with enough work we could work with just about any of them. Um, we're spending uh, uh, $30,000 or so in, in parts on this car. Um, I don't really want um, uh, a home hatchet job on this. This is where you can get into some trouble. It's professional machine shop work, and um, I'd rather pay the money uh, and get it done right uh, uh, to begin with. I'm uh, convinced these guys at VAC Motorsports um, have got the equipment and the stuff. If they'll uh, do it for us, we may fly out and and watch them do it for that matter. It's kind of interesting. I just don't want to do it with my own two little hands. Um, as Brian will tell you, our motto here is if it, you can't achieve a precision um, fit with a three pound sledgehammer, don't force it. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna make a command level decision right up front. We're not going to force it from the beginning. There you go. Uh, this is a very good and expensive transmission. Um, our motor on the Speedster was about $1,700. Our controller was about uh, the same, about $1,700, $1,800. This motor and controller combination, um, by the time we had it shipped here, uh, is about $12,000. Uh, AC motors are more efficient than the DC motors. Uh, they have fewer parts. We don't have any of the commutator and brush situation. 
uh, where after uh, a mere 70 or 80,000 miles, we have to change the brushes, which is not that big a thing. But this is almost a sealed unit. Uh, less parts. Uh, there are AC induction motors that have run for over 100 years without rebuilt. Um, and so uh, I like that. The three-phase con controller concept and the regenerative braking. I think that's the future of EVs, but right now they're quite expensive. This is $12,000 worth of controller and motor. Um, I actually, after reviewing it again, um, I think this is a better system uh, than many, as uh, Mini Cooper is using the AC propulsion system um, with theirs. Uh, I liked the concept of the AC propulsion controller had the DC to DC converter and the charger built into it, but after reviewing it, I was underwhelmed by their motor. Uh, their power claims are um, somewhat stated at the peak, and, um, and that controller is enormous. Aside from being $25,000, they wanted us to buy five of them. We do a video about it, and then you can't buy the thing anyway. Uh, we got this from Metric Mind. Uh, where we get a lot of our stuff. Uh, our friend Victor over there uh, um, is uh, quite pricey, but he gets good engineering, good stuff. And we're going to go with his eVision um, instrumentation system again. This will be a first with it for us with this uh, controller and motor. But reviewing the specifications on it, I think it's a superb match for the Mini, probably better than the AC Propulsion. I did not like their battery system at all. Um, this concept of putting 5,000 little cells in an electric car is, is a problem. And I'll uh, go on record right now. You're going to see electric cars burn into the ground. You don't make 10,000 connections with dissimilar metals in many cases and hide them inside of modules and then drive them down the road in a vibration-filled environment and not expect problems. We're dealing with extremely high currents here, and high currents through even very low resistance connections uh, causes heat. You heat up every terminal in that battery pack every time you press the accelerator, and you come park the car, they cool down again. And uh, I always get the sense we're one lock washer <laughs> away from disaster. Uh, you have to keep those connections clean and tight and how they're going to do that 10,000 times inside modules. Um, I, I don't like the system in the Tesla and I don't like the system in the Mini. Um, I, they, they profess to be extremely professional engineers. I'm sure they've got it under control. I don't want it in my building, my car, or anything near my club fist hands uh, because I, I just think it's a bad idea. We use the larger prismatics We'll have the terminals where we can get to them, and we'll check them often and make sure they're clean and tight. So I like this system considerably better than the, the one that uh, they're putting in the Mini. But more importantly, uh, you guys that are following along with us, how we do this conversion, could, for money, order this system. Now, you can put another system in here. In fact, the, the NetGain Warp 9 and the Kelly controller that we uh, put in the uh, Speedster uh, would work just fine, fit just fine, work just fine in this vehicle and would be certainly a, a lower cost alternative. Um, the car would, at 3,200 pounds, would be a, a little more docile mm -hmm. um, than what we're going to get with this system. You wouldn't have regenerative braking, uh, but it would make a fine electric car and you'd be able to drive highway speeds. It's not that it won't do 70 or 80 mile an hour. It's uh, It'll just with that weight. Uh, take a little longer to get there, but it won't be a, a dangerously slow acceleration. I think it'd be a quite drivable uh, car and, and would be quite successful conversion. Um, the um, We're starting with a brand new $32,000 um, Clubman. Uh, we've gone to some extent expense to put the best brakes we could get on it, and we're going to try to show you how to do 
the Cadillac conversion. This is a no compromises. Everything's going to work. The air conditioner, the heater, the uh, power, uh, heated seats, the uh, stereo system, uh, uh, the whole thing. And we're going to select the best components we can that you could also likewise get without having to buy five of them right. from AC Propulsion, uh, who were almost paralyzed in their fear of being left behind in the EV uh, revolution, which almost leads inevitably to their being <laughs> left behind. <laughs> it's funny how the universe works. I love it. <laughs> so 